Welcome to this video on how to set up your Crusader GT2 with the FR Sky Tyrannus QX7. The Crusader GT2 doesn't come with a receiver, and so you first have to get your hands on an FR Sky compatible receiver. In this video, we're going to use the popular X4R, and we're going to use the version of the receiver that doesn't come with pins pre soldered, uh, even though this is the one, uh, not the one shown here. This is because it fits better in the frame. So you get a bunch of cables with the GT2 and uh, we need to pick out the one that we're going to need to connect the receiver to the flight controller. Uh, in this case, this will be this uh, PPM slash SBUS cable as the X4R is an SBUS receiver. The first thing to look at is the manual that comes with the GT2. So this is a diagram of the flight controller and this is the receiver connector that we are interested in. If you look closely, you'll see that the pins are labelled ground, 5 volts, PPM and SBUS. These pins correspond to the black wire, which is ground, the red wire, which is 5 volts, and then we have two white wires uh, for the PPM and the SBUS. We're only interested in the SBUS wire in this case, and we can actually remove the PPM cable um, wire from the whole cable as it isn't needed. Make sure you get the right one there. In this case, we're removing the inner of the two white wires. We can also cut these cables as we will be soldering them directly onto the receiver. Uh, we need about half the length here. Here is the bare X4R receiver and we need to solder the three wires to the bottom left three holes on the receiver as we look at it. So the order is SBUS, 5V and ground, i.e. white, red and black. So we just solder that onto the receiver. At this stage, we now need to access the flight controller. The GT2 has a nice cage protecting the electronics, and this is what we have to lift off to get to the flight controller. Uh, so all we need to do is remove the front two screws of the cage, and you also need to loosen the screw at the back, and then the cage should simply lift off. So we can then simply plug the receiver into the connector on the flight controller, and before we mount the receiver, we're going to bind it to the radio and get it all set up. You can bind this receiver in se several different modes, but we're going to stick with the default mode, which is D16. This way, you don't have to short any pins, and SBUS will be outputted, as it says in the manual. Uh, and this is what we want. So we now move on to the Tranus to get it bound to the GT2. We first edit a model, and you can have several different models for different quads, and so we want to name this one uh, GT2 or something similar. Uh, we can then scroll down to the bottom of this menu, and you can see it's in D16 mode, as we wanted. We're going to have 1 to 16 channels, and so we can now bind it, bind it. You scroll to the bind button, uh, press the right button on the Tyrannus, and the Tyrannus will enter binding mode you'll know it is, it is in the correct mode when it makes a beeping sound. Before powering the receiver to bind it, it's important to attach the antenna for the video transmitter, otherwise the power could blow the video transmitter. So to bind the receiver, all you need to do is to press the bind bu button on the receiver while plugging in the battery. You must also ensure that the Tyrannus is in the binding mode uh, as you do this. You will then see the flashing light on the receiver turn green to signal that it has successfully bound. So now that we have the model set up, we might as well set up some extra channels as well. Um, so you select the model and page through the different menus until you reach the inputs menu, where you'll see which channels have been set up. At the moment, they're just the four default channels, throttle, aileron, elevator and rudder. To add other channels, we go through to the mixer menu. So we can go down to channel 5 and select this. What we're going to do here is to set this channel up as the arming switch. We therefore want this to be a two position switch, ideally, uh, on the radio. And this one at the back will work well. We're going to name this channel, so remember what it is, and we'll call it arm. Remember to press exit when done. We can then select the source of the channel, i.e. which switch is going to control it. Uh, we can do this by pressing the button so that the source flashes. When it is flashing, you can simply flip the switch that you want to assign to this channel, and in this case, uh, we want the switch at the back of the Tranus. The switch is then automatically assigned as the source. In this case, this is SF, 
and we can leave the rest of the settings as they are and exit that menu. Now you can see that channel 5 is set as ARM and we can move on to channel 6. We're going to set this up as the flight modes and we want to have a three position switch ideally for this. We'll again name this mode and we can then select the source again and toggle a three position switch which in this case is SB. Once we've done this, we can exit out and we can see that channel 6 is set up as mode. So now we have all six channels mapped. We can set up everything else in Betaflight. So we now just need to plug the flight controller into the computer and open up Betaflight. Uh, you first hit connect in the top right corner. And we now need to tell Betaflight what type of receiver we're using, i.e. Espus. And so we first need to go to the ports tab. Then need to make sure that the serial RX is selected here on UART3. We then move on to the configuration tab and we look for the drop down menu uh, so that we can tell Betaflight what type of receiver we're using. In this case, we want to select serial receiver and we then need to say what type of serial receiver we're using. And in this case, it's an S bus receiver. After completing this, we need to hit save and reboot. We can then check that everything is working as it should by going onto the receiver tab and we will see our channels. With the Tyrannus radio turned on, as we move the sticks on the radio, the channels should move correspondingly on the screen. However, as you will see here, the channels could be mapped incorrectly, i.e. when we move the throttle stick on the radio, the roll channel moves instead on the screen. We therefore need to change these channel mappings and we have a separate small video on how to do this. And so once we've changed the mapping, all the channels on the radio should correspond to the channels on screen as shown. We can then move on to setting up the flight modes, and we go to the modes tab to do this. Uh, we can first tackle the arm function, and as you will remember, we set channel 5 on the radio to be the arming channel, and this corresponds to AUX1 on beta flight. Um, so you can select the range. Um, so that the little orange indicator at the bottom falls within that range when the switch on the radio is in one position and falls outside it when the switch is in the other position. It is best to put the range at the end of the line here so that you arm the quad by flicking the two position switch towards you. After saving this you'll see that when you arm the quad, i.e. the orange indicator is within the range, the arm mode becomes orange. For the rest of the flight modes, we have a little article on Drone Trust about setting up beginner flight modes, and the screenshot on screen now is of these flight modes. The link is in the description below, so check this out to set up your beginner flight modes. So we've now completed the setup in beta flight, and we just need to install the receiver onto the Crusader. Before we do this, we need to make sure there are no contacts on the receiver to short circuit it, and so we need to wrap it in heat shrink or electrical tape. We'll use tape here as it's slightly easier. Once that's done, we can then slot the receiver into the space under the protection cage, and there's no real need for anything else to secure the receiver as it fits pretty snugly. We now just need to tidy up the antenna as we don't want them loose and getting caught in any propellers. It's best if they are placed at 90 degrees to one another, and this means they receive the best signal, and so we can secure them to two of the arms of the quad. We can do this, by, do this by slipping them under the zip ties that are holding the ESCs in place. We can then further secure them with electrical tape. And so that's it, we've added the X4R receiver to the Crusader GT2 and configured it in Betaflight. You can now reattach the protection cage and get flying. Thanks for watching.